It's space weather. Check out the sun at 171 angstroms. Sunspot 2727 ain't going away anytime soon. And also, just since yesterday evening, we've got a new active and interesting region, which we will cover momentarily. It's not a sunspot. It's another plage. But check it out. It just comes out of nowhere. I'll let that play through one more time. It's got interesting implications to solar activity due to its polarity and location so far from the solar equator. Let's look at 304 angstroms. It's always sunny on the SDO satellite. Plage forming. There it is. We will explain why it is important momentarily. But before that, let's look at the magnetic lines. A weak coronal hole, number 50. Still facing Earth, still awaiting a magnetic connection. Perhaps we will not see one. I think there's a tug of war going on between the North and South Pole coronal holes. Keep an eye on that. Let's look at earthquakes. Last eight hours have been fairly quiet. Nothing over a five. 4.3 in Russia. 4.8 in Japan. 4.8 in Indonesia. Greece getting hit with a 4.6 and a 4.9, as has been the case lately. Man, seems like a hell of a place to go on vacation nowadays. You want to experience a mid-4 earthquake, go to Greece. I think you'll get one. Getting hit every day two to six times. Check out spaceweathernews.com. Look at some data. Check it out. We actually had a B-class X-ray flare right there. It barely makes it over the line, but that's the biggest flare we've had in a couple weeks, I guess. Solar wind speed, still low, about 300. It's actually gone down overnight. And solar wind density is popping up. Perhaps the predecessor to a coronal hole wind stream. If you see the density come back down and the speed go up, that's a coronal hole wind stream. Magnetometer is looking pretty smooth. Again, no indication with the phi angle of a connection with that coronal hole near the South Pole. KP index is back to one. Uh, low level cosmic ray warning remains in effect as I think we're at about 0.2 average KP for the last, say, three days. Electron flux is smooth. Again, we would have, we would be not surprised at all to see a spike in the X-ray, I mean, in the electron flux associated with uh, the sunspot and that plage. No charging hazards. F2 ionosphere layer looking pretty discharged. Nothing too noteworthy there. There's your auroral forecasts. Southern Hemisphere is looking a little bit more active than the North. Now, let's look at Solar Ham. What's the situation with that plage? Well, haha. <laughs> First of all, look at the polarity. Notice it's the opposite polarity of that sunspot. Even though that sunspot is north of the celestial, uh, the, the solar equator. Now, that plage has no umbra. It's not a sunspot. However, being that far from the equator, 
and having that kind of a concentration of magnetic fields, it could be one of the first indications of cycle 25. We'll leave links below to all the articles that we access here. Uh, Solar Ham talks about it. There's their little blurb from yesterday about the rising plage region. Now, let's look at something we don't normally look at. The solar synoptic map. Now, every day, and this one just got updated, since we did the prep for this video. Here's today's. It's only been up for about an hour. This one's done by Spencer. You can see coronal hole 49 attached to the North Pole. They don't even mention the plage. They just show a little filament there. Here's coronal hole 50 which is connected to the south solar pole coronal hole 47 a little tiny one just below sunspot 2727 27. this is done every day it's available at solar ham or you can go directly to the link which we will include in the description Here's the location of your planets. Mercury is racing up behind the Earth and actually is now visible on the Lasco C3. Let's have a look. Is Mercury rising. Don't worry, Mercury's not teleporting. All right. Now, let's head to spaceweather.com. Take one moment to uh, look at the global cooling situation. Space Weather has recently started to put up a new piece of data. If you scroll down on the left side, you see the Thermosphere Climate Index. It's been being measured since 1957. And it was very hot back then. That was actually the hottest that it's ever been measured. And now it's close to the coldest it's ever been measured. The coldest was February of 2009. Let's look at the explanation of the data. Most radio astronomers agree the sun is entering one of the deepest solar minima of the space age. Sunspots have been absent for most of 2018, and the sun's ultraviolet output has sharply dropped. So, we're measuring the thermosphere, which is the outermost atmospheric layer above the mesosphere, which is above the stratosphere, which is above the troposphere, which is where all weather occurs. This satellite is measuring infrared emissions from CO2 and nitric oxide, which play a key role in energy balance. And the thermosphere is the part of the atmosphere that the sun's light is actually hitting. Here's a diagram showing you uh, what wavelengths should end up where. Also, we'll have links to this in the description. Here's your historic data. The hottest we've seen is in 1950. And the coldest we've seen was right at the end of last cycle. So, it's an important factor. It's a, it's an indication, perhaps telling the future of how much radiation the sun's going to put out. Here's a, a 
closer up image of the raw data. Here's your low point in 2009. I believe it's right there. And here's your current low point as we are in another solar minimum. So, in any case, thank you for watching. More videos coming out daily. We appreciate all you subscribers. Everybody out there interested in learning more about things like astronomy, cosmology, climate change, the sun, astrophysics. When you're wondering about solar flares and x-ray flux coming out of Sunspot 27, don't drink. And if you drink, watch Sunspot 2727. It's exciting. <laughs>